Thank you very much for your presentation. And I now give the floor to uh, Director General, Mr. Guy Raida. You have the floor, sir. Well, thank you very much in, in, indeed. Uh, my thanks, firstly, to uh, Director General Swing for the invitation uh, to be with you uh, today. Uh, it's uh, very pleasing to be in the company of the Special Representative, Peter Sutherland, and my friend, the Executive Secretary, Mr. al Galaj. Uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me say that Having listened to the previous interventions in this session, I, I, I fear that my intervention uh, risks more to be uh, characterized by repetition than any uh, element of dissonance or disagreement uh, with what I have heard, because I agree very strongly with um, the lines that have been taken by previous speakers. Let me then try to add a few reflections that might add to what you have heard and some thoughts about uh, the way forward, particularly for the GMG. The first comments uh, are about the, um, the particular juncture at which we find ourselves. Seems to me that there are um, a number of elements which um, put together can lead us to believe, as uh, Director General Swing has just said, uh, that we are on the cusp of something qualitatively new in respect of migration, and that there are new demands upon us in the multilateral system to respond to evolving circumstances. What are these circumstances? Well, the first, obviously, is events, what is happening in the world. Uh, and we are constantly shocked, and should be shocked, by the litany of tragedies related to migration, which did not begin in Lampedusa, and have not ended in Lampedusa, but which are the sharpest call to action that I think we can possibly have. The second is the institutional uh, conjuncture in, in which we find ourselves. Uh, in the wake of the second high-level dialogue with everything that brought uh, to uh, our work, uh, to the forthcoming Global Forum under Sweden's leadership. And of course, as we've just heard, with the evolving circumstances and working methods of the GMG itself. And let's place this against um, the overall background, which the Deputy Secretary General has reminded us is one of a global landscape, a rapidly changing global landscape, in which migration is an important landmark, a necessary and inevitable part of the globalized economy, and one that we must continue to insist is a positive element of uh, that global landscape. It is striking, of course, and we've been reminded of this, uh, that the very strong feelings of consensus that exist in this room and that have been articulated by speakers this morning contrast somewhat with the manner in which migration is dealt with out there in uh, the member states of our respective organizations. Um, Director General, you very courageously spoke of the lack of political courage uh, in dealing uh, with migration issues, and we know that migration issues are being dealt with in very complex and sometimes extremely difficult political force fields, and we cannot divorce our discussions uh, from that reality because our future work will be conditioned by those realities. This said, um, I have to say uh, that I am much encouraged and uh, the ILO's tripartite constituency of governments, workers and employers have expressed uh, their encouragement uh, from the outcomes of the high-level dialogue. Uh, the very fact that we did get a consensus declaration, something which those with greater experience than I uh, tell me would have been an unlikely outcome a number of years uh, ago. We have seen uh, in the outcome of the HOD and the Secretary General's uh, eight-point agenda a very clear and very welcome um, recognition of the rights dimension, the rights and protection dimension to the migration agenda, what Peter Sutherland has referred to 
as an agenda which recognised the dignity and uh, the equality of persons and responds, uh, Director General Swing, to what you said, the need to look at migration as the behaviour and the needs of individual human beings endowed with rights and with dignity. Tremendously important. Now, let me say as well, and um, I hope you will not think me uh, parochial, if I say that the ILO uh, is encouraged by the recognition in the HLD outcomes and in the Secre Secretary General's eight points agenda, the recognition of the importance of the labour dimensions of migration. And I think I can defend myself effectively from accusations of being parochial by the simple fact that 90% of international migrants are workers or family members of workers. So labour is very much at the centre of the migration story. And that's why we see a very strong convergence between uh, the work being undertaken in these institutions, the IOM and the different governance institutions for migration, and the ILO's own decent work agenda. And so we very strongly welcomed the attention given by the Secretary General to areas such as the need for equitable recruitment practices for migration, for skills recognition and certification, issues such as the portability of uh, social security benefits, and, not least, the role of social dialogue in developing migration policies effectively. Since the high-level dialogue took place, the ILO itself has held a tripartite meeting on labour migration to look at how we can plot the way forward uh, in the implementation of the high-level dialogue outcomes. And I think given the central role of jobs and employment in sustainable development, there is a broad consensus in our constituency that the decent work agenda and the issues confronting migrant workers must become central uh, to debates on migration and development. In that regard, uh, let me say that it has been of particular importance uh, that the HLD outcome recognise the need for the promotion and respect of international labour standards. Uh, and in that context, let me underline the importance which not only the ILO, but others have given to the ILO's Domestic Workers Convention, it's Convention 189. And at this table, I want to thank uh, the very strong advocacy, firstly, special, uh, Mr. Sutherland, by you yourself. I was told by my colleagues that having listened to Mr. Sutherland, I ought to sort of raise the tone of my own advocacy <laughs> on the Domestic Workers Convention. Uh, marginally embarrassing, but actually quite useful, I have to say. Um, we look for um, significant progress on this uh, convention. Now, colleagues, as you know, um, the ILO will be taking up the GMG chair uh, in 2014 in the circumstances, Sven, that you've described. We're delighted to do so, and we do so with a very clear understanding of the responsibilities uh, that are attached uh, to uh, that role. Uh, speakers have referred to some of the evolutions uh, in the GMG and the outcome of the GMG's own internal review processes, which were endorsed by GMG principles in, in July. We have a multi-annual work plan for 2013 to 2015. And we are clearly intent on helping the GMG become more strategic in its work, more impactful by better harnessing the voices of its member agencies for joint global advocacy. We need to pool our expertise better to create practical guidance tools and knowledge products, along with training to reinforce agency coordination and capacities. Now, I see it as an integral part of the ILO's role in the GMG next year to promote close collaboration between the partner agencies and to guide the GMG's work in accordance with the Secretary General's eight-point agenda for action. And can I just in that context and very telegraphically mention a number of points that seem to me to be of crucial importance. Firstly, and building on the 
great work of the IOM and the chair of the GMG, uh, I think we need to stimulate further engagement in the efforts to ensure the integration of migration in the post-2015 UN development agenda, including through the objective of productive employment and decent work for all and the protection of migrants, human and labour rights. Secondly, and as stated in the work plan, we will try to do our best to establish channels for regular and more structured engagement of the GMG with government in response to their requests for greater transparency. And also, and I want to underline this, with civil society organisations, including the social partners. And I want to thank the special representative who, as requested by the Secretary General, has committed to work with us in facilitating closer GMG and global forum uh, collaboration. This seems to me the essential part of governance improvement. And in that regard, we look forward to working constructively with Ambassador Ackerman as a Swedish chair uh, of the GFMD and with the incoming Turkish uh, chair. And at the same time, we do need to respond to the call from our own constituents to ensure greater space for them, workers and employers' organisations, in global forum uh, processes. They are not yet recognised as distinct actors, but they are critical to improving the governance of migration, particular labour migration and mobility. And I think that this is an area that will require further reflection by the ILO and the GMG. Let me say as well that it is important to create better opportunities to document and exchange good practices at country and regional levels and for bringing these into the global policy debate and at the same time to strengthen the knowledge base on migration, including practical tools for improved data collection. Colleagues, I've mentioned already and I will close with this, the importance of the ILO's uh, Domestic uh, Workers' Convention. I think it is important in its own right, for its own content, because it addresses the needs of more than 50 million workers around the world, many of whom are amongst the most vulnerable on labour markets. But I think that the Domestic Workers' Convention also has the effect uh, and the role of example. There are other ILO conventions which relate specifically to migrant workers. Uh, the year, next year marks the 65th anniversary of the ILO Migration for Employment Convention, that's number 97, which was the first ever international standard on migrant workers. And in 2015, the following year, we will be commemorating the fourth, 40th anniversary of the Migrant Workers Convention 143, as well as the 10th anniversary of the ILO's multilateral framework on labour migration. I don't think that we should be shying away from the normative elements of uh, the migration debate. Colleagues, I will end with that. I think we're at a moment where we need to bring not just political courage, Bill, but also uh, multilateral ambition uh, to the tasks before us. Uh, in our own way, uh, the ILO is committed to that task and looks forward to working with all partners to that end. Thank you very much.